July 1942 and Australia is under attack. Japan has joined the Second World War, attacking British, French, Dutch, American and Australian territories in the Pacific. With nearly 3,000 Japanese landing at Gona on the northern coast of New Guinea, all that stands between the Japanese war machine and the prized Papuan capital of Port Moresby is a small group of inexperienced Australian militia. If the Japanese capture Port Moresby, Australia's northern maritime approaches will potentially be vulnerable. This is the story of the Kokoda campaign and the jungle combat that protected the Australian mainland from the fear of Japanese invasion. At Gona, the Japanese advanced quickly south through the jungle towards Kokoda, on bicycle and on foot. Outnumbered, a defensive force comprising troops of the Australian 39th Battalion and Papuan Infantry Battalion deploys between Kokoda and Gona, intending to slow the Japanese advance long enough for Allied reinforcements to be flown into Kokoda Village, the only airstrip in the area. This defensive force is codenamed the Marubra. With the defensive force finally overrun at Oivi, the last village before Kokoda, the defenders are out of time. 28th of July, 1942. The first significant battle of the campaign commences at Kokoda village. Around 100 Australian and Papuan troops defend the village. The lead element of the Japanese force is more than twice that size. Under the command of Lieutenant Colonel William Owen, Australian forces deploy around the edge of a tongue-shaped plateau which provides visibility over the road from Gona. Under the cover of darkness that night, the Japanese commence their assault on the Australian position. Fire tears through the night, but Marubra force stands firm, responding with rifle fire and grenades. Close quarters combat commences. The high ground advantage of the Australian position is negated by Japanese mortars and a single Japanese artillery piece which shells the defenders. Australian casualties mount and Owen is killed while rallying his troops in defence. He is the battle's most senior casualty. With Japanese flanking attacks threatening to surround Kokoda village, the remainder of Marubra force withdraws south to Daniki. The Japanese choose to consolidate their position at Kokoda village rather than continue the advance. Meanwhile, the exhausted remnants of Marubra force arrive at Daniki, where Major Alan Cameron assumes command. 4th of August 1942, having hiked north for five days along the Kokoda Trail, the bulk of the Australian 39th Battalion arrives at Daniki. The battalion is finally ready to counter-attack and retake Kokoda village. 8th of August 1942, Cameron deploys Alpha and Charlie companies along separate paths towards Kokoda village. The Japanese have also deployed along the Kokoda Trail, moving south to capture Daniki along the exact same route as Charlie Company. With both sides unaware until the very last moment, they engage at Fawani Creek. Rifle and machine gun fire is exchanged in jungles so dense that neither side can manoeuvre effectively. With the main Japanese force engaging Charlie Company, Alpha Company proceeds along a trail the Japanese don't know exists and walks right into Kokoda village. Meanwhile, to the east, Delta Company moves to block the Kokoda-Gona road. Encountering Japanese engineers improving the road, Delta Company engages and holds as the firefight rages well into the afternoon. Without hearing any fire from the direction of Kokoda, nor knowing that Alpha Company have occupied the village, Delta Company withdraws to Daniki. 9th of August, 1942. Alpha Company are alone at Kokoda Village and supplies are low. A Japanese infantry company returns from Fawani Creek but is unable to force the Australians out of Kokoda. The advance south of the 1st 144th Battalion is stopped by the stubborn resistance of Alpha Company 39th Battalion, which remains defending Kokoda. The Japanese thrust southwards cannot continue while threatened by an enemy infantry company holding an important village to their rear. For nearly two days, the Australian defensive perimeter holds. However, with no resupply in sight, Alpha Company is finally forced to withdraw to Daniki. Due to the ferocity and dogged determination in defence of Kokoda village, the Japanese High Command is convinced that a much larger Australian force is defending the Owen Stanley Range. The Japanese decide to await reinforcements, which gives the Australian 39th Battalion time to consolidate at Ishirava. 
Meanwhile, experienced and battle-hardened troops from the 2nd Australian Imperial Force begin to arrive in Port Moresby, and the fresh Australian 21st Brigade is immediately dispatched north along the Kokoda Trail. Logistics is now critical for both sides. Supply in the treacherous terrain of the Owen Stanley Ranges is extremely difficult, and neither army has the full supply of food, ammunition and equipment needed to sustain their forces on the Kokoda Trail. Now under the command of Brigadier Arnold Potts, only two of the three battalions are able to redeploy. When these battalions reach Isurava, they find a rapidly deteriorating situation. The Australian 39th and 53rd Battalions cling to positions either side of Eora Creek, with 2nd AIF companies sent into action as soon as they arrive to patch up weak points in the Australian line. 30th of August 1942, the Japanese have worn down the Australian resistance. They now manoeuvre to the west of the Australian position, threatening to flank and cut off Australian forces. As a result, Potts gives the order to fall back. Australian forces regroup near the Isurava Rest House, but cannot dig in to create a defensive position due to the continued harassment of pursuing Japanese troops. Captain Charles Dickens leads a counter-attack with Charlie Company, 2nd 14th Battalion, to drive the Japanese back. Unfortunately, the misdirected attack results in a blue-on-blue -blue and hits the body of Marubra Force, sending a large group of the Australian 2nd 14th Battalion off the Kokoda Trail and into the jungle. The friendly fire incident ends the battle at Isurava. Over the next week, Australian forces conduct a fighting withdrawal back to Brigade Hill, the next major defendable location along the Kokoda Trail. Marubra Force is now further reinforced by the Australian 2nd 27th Battalion, 21st Brigade. Australian forces are confident that with the fresh battalion's arrival, the relentless Japanese advance can finally be stopped. Potts deploys his three battalions over a two-kilometre stretch along the Kokoda Trail, assuming that the dangerously steep flanks of Brigade Hill will limit the Japanese to a frontal assault only. However, the Japanese commander, Major General Hori Tomitaro, has other plans. Japanese forces advance to contact and pin down the Australian 2nd 27th Battalion on the front line. The Japanese 2nd 144th Battalion now manoeuvres in a wide arc to the west of Brigade Hill. On the evening of the 7th of September 1942, under the cover of darkness, Japanese forces climb the steep ridgeline and position themselves in between the Australian battalions on the summit of Brigade Hill. As the sun rises, rain begins to pour down as Australian forces desperately try to reconnect their severed line. Three times Australian forces counterattack. However, the Japanese defenders cannot be dislodged. Brigade Hill is lost and Potts orders a retreat. This time there is no orderly fighting withdrawal. The Australian 2nd 27th Battalion is cut off and will subsequently be lost in the jungle for three weeks. They play no further part in the campaign. The Australian command is alarmed by this turn of events and sends in fresh leadership to revive the situation. Brigadier Potts is relieved of command by Brigadier Ken Ether, who takes over command of Marubra Force at Irabawa Ridge. Marubra Force, now consisting only of the remnants of the crippled 21st Brigade, is reinforced by the Australian 25th Brigade and 3rd Militia Battalion newly committed to action. 14th September 1942, the Battle of Irabawa commences. With five Australian battalions now defending Irabawa Ridge, the first few days of the battle are fought with little gain. Japanese forces move their artillery forward and begin firing at the Australian defenders from as close as 50 metres. The men of the Australian 21st Brigade have defended well to this point, but now approach the end of their endurance. A critical mistake is made by a platoon from the Australian 3rd Militia Battalion, while expanding their fighting pits, the men put aside their weapons but post no sentries. A Japanese patrol rushes forward and with no arms to defend themselves, Australian forces withdraw, allowing the Japanese to occupy a high point on the ridge known as San Kakuyama. This mistake turns the battle, allowing Japanese forces to fire down on the Australian position. Over several days, Australian forces try but fail to drive the Japanese off their new position. Ether requests permission from the Australian 7th Division Commander, Major General Arthur Allen, 
to withdraw to Imitar Ridge, the final ridge in the Owen Stanleys. Alan reluctantly agrees, telling Ether there'll be no further withdrawals. The Japanese are elated to capture Irabawa from where they can see the searchlights shining over Port Moresby. The Japanese advance, however, has run its course. With a stretched supply line of approximately six days' march back to Kokoda and without aerial resupply, the Japanese can no longer advance. Australian forces, meanwhile, consolidate on Imitar Ridge and prepare for a counter-advance. Australian commanders have waited to take offensive action since the campaign began. It is only now, with reinforcements from the Australian 16th Brigade, that this opportunity arises. 28th September 1942, the Australian counter-offensive commences. To their surprise, Irabawa is abandoned by the Japanese, and opposition isn't met until several weeks later at Miola Ridge and Mount Bellamy. The Japanese have withdrawn to three fortified lines higher in the mountains, recognising they cannot support their forces at the southern end of the Kokoda Trail. 15th October 1942, Australian forces have forced the Japanese from their first line positions back to their second offensive line at Templeton's Crossing. The next five days consist of Australian probing attacks as fresh troops from the Australian 16th Brigade arrive to replace the Australian 25th Brigade as the leading formation. On the 20th of October, the Australian 2nd 2nd Battalion of the 16th Brigade launches the most successful Australian attack of the entire campaign. The 2nd 1st Battalion pins and holds the Japanese front line while the 2nd 2nd Battalion climbs the high ground to the east, getting above the Japanese fortifications located on two parallel spurs below. This attack drives the Japanese off the spurs and secures Templeton's crossing. Japanese forces withdraw to their final defensive position near Eora Creek Village. The natural defensive features of Eora Creek Village are comprised of the fast-moving creek itself, twisted in an S-shape, and hemmed by steeply rising mountains on all sides. Entrenched Japanese artillery guards against the Australian approach and has clear visibility of the two log bridges crossing Eora Creek. The Australian 16th Brigade's commander, Brigadier John Lloyd, orders the 2nd 1st Battalion to cross the log bridges, a frontal assault. This order brings protests from his battalion commander, who fears heavy casualties given the Japanese are guarding the crossings. In a stroke of good fortune, a small Australian patrol discovers that Japanese sentries guarding the bridges are asleep. The Australian 2nd 1st Battalion quickly crosses Eora Creek. The Australian battalion makes it over the first bridge and halfway across the second before the Japanese are alerted, immediately opening fire on the Australians still crossing. By now, the Australian 2nd 3rd Battalion has also crossed Eora Creek, but the two Australian battalions face steep slopes and strong Japanese defensive positions. The 2nd 1st Battalion deploys into an uncomfortable defensive position beneath the Japanese defenders who harass them by rolling grenades and rocks down the slope at them. Meanwhile, the 2nd 3rd Battalion spends almost five days skirmishing while climbing the high ground to the west. 27th of October 1942, the Australian 2nd 3rd Battalion commander has finally gained sufficient elevation for an attack and orders his battalion to charge down Eora Ridgeline. Close quarters combat commences. In some of the most fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat of the entire campaign, the Japanese position is cleared pit by fighting pit. Determined Japanese resistance has delayed the Australian advance by over a week. However, the path to Kokoda now lies open. On the 2nd of November 1942, Australian forces venture into Kokoda village and find it deserted. The Japanese have withdrawn, allowing its recapture without a bullet being fired. The success of the Kokoda campaign occurred at a major turning point in the war that was driven by the victory at Milne Bay and the American triumph on Guadalcanal. This turning point for the war in the Pacific theatre allows Australian and the Allied forces to go on the offensive, island hopping through the northern chain towards Japan over the next three years. Japan will never recover.
And with the dropping of the first atom bomb on the 6th of August 1945, the Japanese Emperor surrenders unconditionally nine days later. As a result of the Kokoda Campaign, one Victoria Cross is awarded and the Kokoda Trail Battle Honour is awarded to nine Second Australian Imperial Force Battalions and three Australian Militia Units. Ten current Army Reserve Units claiming lineage to those Militia Units and which inherited the Battle Honours of the Second AIF Units still display the Kokoda Trail Battle Honour on their colours today. Combat along the Kokoda Trail represents some of the most desperate and vicious fighting ever undertaken by Australian forces in some of the most hostile conditions on the planet. And while Gallipoli retains a central place in Australia's formative military experience, the Kokoda campaign represents the first time that the general Australian public believed the Australian mainland was threatened by invasion and was successfully defended.